cloud. Welcome everyone. This is the first cohort call of Open Life Science 5, OLS 5. We don't have a cohort name yet, but we will give you as an assignment, but really welcome. We are so excited that you're here. Um, I think we look forward to this particular call uh, from the very beginning when we launched the program because there's so much that we learned from you and uh, there's so much that we would learn throughout the program. Um, so for your reminder, this call is being recorded. Uh, it's also being live transcribed using Otter AI. It's not always perfect, but hopefully it allows folks who are in the low bandwidth region or there are accent difference, of course, <laughs> AI does not pick my full accent, um, but please uh, use that. We will be using code of conduct. So there's an open life science code of conduct that applies to all our call, including this one. Um, so if the, at any point there is something that makes you feel uncomfortable or there's accessibility related issues that you would like to report, please email to team at openlifesite.org. You could also email us individually uh, to Yo Yehudi, uh, Emmy Sang, Bernice Patu, and I. Um, if, if anything about any of these members I have just named, you want to report to, but you don't want them to be included, please reach out to us privately. We would use uh, breakout rooms for discussion because breakout rooms are the most important things that happen in these calls. Um, however, we want to give you an option of either having a written reflection-based exercise. So if we send you to breakout rooms where you would be sitting with each other, but you will be typing either in the chat or in the etherpad that the link that we've shared with you. Uh, if you would like to join that, please add W in front of your name. You can edit your name by clicking on three dots on the top right of your image. And if you would like to be assigned to a spoken breakout room, please add S in front of you. So don't write W or S, it's, it's a bit confusing for us when we try to assign you. So for today, just choose one which is most convenient for you. And you could choose that for whatever reason. Some of the reasons could be that it's just in general convenient for you to interact with people in the written form, or you're in a low bandwidth region where you can't really talk or um, in whatever the reason, I'm not no one to decide it's really for you. Please uh, take advantage of that. So we will today say hello to each other, uh, introduce ourselves, and we will hope to record that part so folks who are not joining us today can also hear who you are, who you are and what your project is about. We've shared the community participation guidelines with you. Please do have a look at that. And this is also an opportunity to let us know if that really works for you or if there are places that you would like us to improve it. We will today review our definition of open leadership. We believe that everybody who have joined us with project, they are the leaders of their project and they have most knowledge about their community and their program. So we will review that a little bit and we will unpack some difference between open by default, open by design. So you'll see some of these prompts uh, from line 26 onwards. Um, and with that, I also want to just say we are, uh, we have everything written in the, etherpad that is maintained for each week. Um, this is for you to come back. So please use that for your own benefit. You can also export that at the end of this call. You can try to return to this link, but we would try to put that in a GitHub repository for you to review later. We have an icebreaker. <laughs> we want to build a playlist for you. Uh, we have playlists for each cohort. Please add a song that really reflects how you're feeling today or what you're feeling about your project. So with that, I'm going to pass it to Berenice to take on the next round of Lightning Talks. Thanks a lot, Malvika. And yeah, welcome again, everybody. Really, really, really pleased to see you, everybody there. Um, I will just start doing a Lightning round table. So five, four keywords each. Um, so what is your name, location, project name, and most recent Obi? And I will start from the top of the roll call. So please add your name in the notes that I can be sure that I follow the, or the correct order. So if you are not in the roll call, I will probably forget to call you later. So please add your name there. Um, Yo, first. Hey folks, I always do this really badly. I'm Yo. Um, I was about half phased out when I started this. What are the rest of the keywords? 
um, location. Thank you, thank you. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> Yo, I'm based in the UK. My project is OLS. Um, and my most recent hobby, I'm going to say, is trying to nurse my dying peperomias to life. And next, Emmy. Hi, I'm Emmy. I'm based in Utrecht, the Netherlands. I'm also with OLS. My recent hobby, bouldering, climbing fans. Malvika. Hi, I'm Malvika. I'm based in London. I am part of OLS team, but I'm also bringing a project as a mentee. It's about open governance. Uh, and my recent hobby is that I'm trying to do some acrylic paintings. Next is me. So I'm Berenice. I'm based in Freiburg, Germany. Uh, I'm OLS also a team. Recent hobby, except uh, parenting, uh, photography, I would say. And uh, next one, Emma. I am Emma. I'm based in the UK in Portsmouth in the South. Um, the project is the Fight Cliff Community Project, but I'm also being a mentor, so a bit like Malvika, I'm a bit of both this time. Um, and my recent hobby, I'm the same as Bernice, it's mostly kiddie things, and we've been setting up our fish tank in the last couple of weeks. We've got some new fishies. Thanks. Next one, Lisa. Lizana, you're on mute, I think. Wow, I'm the first one to do that. I'm sorry. So, hi, I'm, uh, I'm Lizana. Um, I am based in Delft in the Netherlands. Um, my project, which I do together with Alessandra, who is on her way, stuck on a train, uh, has to do with community engagement in the Open Science MOOC uh, that we are running for, uh, for Delft University. Um, and recent hobbies, well, I recently got my uh, cinema pass uh, to go to as many movies as possible. So uh, I'm trying to watch all the Oscar movies uh, before uh, the awards are uh, being given. Okay, sorry for the noise. The small one is on the way and she's on the phone, it seems. So the next one is Valentina. Hi, hi everyone. I'm Valentina. I'm based in Montreal in Canada. Um, the project we are trying to bring about um, relates with an open source platform for sharing clinical data in neuroimaging. And my hobby is just running away from things and feelings, I guess. <laughs> nice one. Uh, next one, Sabrina. Hi, I'm Sabrina. I'm from Argentina. And the project name is R5. It's a huge project, so I will let, I will let someone else explain it. <laughs> and my recent hobby is uh, replaying a game, Green Fandango. I don't know if you know it. Uh, that's it. Thanks. Next one, Laura. So Laura has shared in the chat. Uh, do you want to read that, Bernice? Bernice mute. Sorry, all good. Uh, so I am Laura, I'm in Buenos Aires, Argentina. I'm sure that I don't pronounce it correctly. Uh, I'm in the same project as Sabrina and have others here, and I'm not the one explaining it. So, and my recent hobby is reading a lot. Nice. And the next one is Georgia. Hi everyone, I'm Georgia. I'm a researcher at the Alan Turing Institute based in London in the UK. And I'm working with Rob on resources for um, autism, for understanding autism better in South Africa. So sharing in different languages. And I'm really excited to help support him with that. And my most recent hobby, I've been doing a lot of board games. Um, so we have this big long one on the go called The King's Dilemma, which is um, quite intense it turns out, but also quite fun. Nice. Next one, uh, Mariangela. I'm really not sure how to pronounce that. But... Just the way you did. It was perfect. Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. Uh, yes, I'm Mariangela, and I'm currently based in Italy, in Genova. Uh, I'm a neuroscientist. Um, the project, uh, the name of my project is Open Science, Open Future, and it's about developing um, like an educational resource um, for young scientists to uh, use at best the open tools within their 
um, research field. Uh, and uh, my most recent hobby is sailing, given that I'm living by the sea for the first time in my life. And it's an outdoor uh, activity, which is kind of like lockdown friendly. <laughs> Nice. Uh, next one, Zach. Hi, everyone. I'm Zach. Uh, let's see what I, I am supposed to say. Um, I'm currently in the U.S. Uh, I'm in uh, Providence, Rhode Island in the U.S. Um, I'm an archaeologist. I'm with the Phytolith Community Project with Emma and Abraham here. I don't see anyone. Oh, and, and uh, Celine. Um, and, um, and my recent hobby has been um, I'm trying to make a good sound system for my TV, since this is where I spend most of my fun time. So I've been buying speakers and receivers and things like that uh, at thrift stores and trying to find something um, that works well. So that's my recent hobby. Nice, thanks. Uh, next one, Frede Federico. Hi everyone, my name is Federico and I am with Sabri and Laura. Uh, in our five project is an Argentinian project involving uh, intelligent artificial and data science with a health record. And my recent hobby, I could say, is taking care of plants. I have quite a lot of plants in my house. <laughs> and I nice meet you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, next one, uh, Jyoti. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Hi. Yes, Jyoti. Yeah. Hi, all. I'm Jyoti. I'm from India. Um, I'm uh, working as a data scientist here. And uh, my OLS 5 project is building pathways for onboarding uh, contributors to Research Software Engineering Asia Association. And my recent most hobby is watching animation movies. Uh, so last week I watched Minions and um, I uh, plan next to watch the Spike Ghibli. So that would be fun. Yeah. Nice. Thanks. Uh, next one, Frederic. Hi, I'm Frederic. Um, I'm based in The Hague, the Netherlands. Um, my project is about uh, making our open access journal I'm working for, make them embrace open science principle. Um, I don't have a reason to be, but I picked it up during the COVID. It's just because in the Hague is close to the sea, it's just going for a dive the whole year. So I do that once a week. Nice. And the next one is Ashin, Ashintia. Hello all, uh, my name is Ashintia. I'm based in Bristol in the UK. Uh, my project for OLS5 is, is to develop the, uh, is to help build the AI for science and government uh, community at the Alan Turing Institute. And I'm sort of rediscovering what hobbies are as I've just emerged from submitting my thesis after several months being underground. So um, yeah, I will figure out a hobby and let you know next time what, what they are. Good luck with that. Um, but congrats. And um, next one, Yandri. Uh, Hi, I'm Viandri and I'm based in Johannesburg. Um, my project is a kind of a YR for people with legal backgrounds, um, creating relatable examples um, just to yeah, explain the why before you get to the how. Uh, my recent hobby is fly fishing and I'm actually waiting for the delivery of a kayak. So the two will probably combine potentially successfully or unsuccessfully in the next few weeks. Nice. Next one, Celine. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Celine. Um, I'm based in Barcelona in Spain, and I'm part of the Open Phytolith uh, uh, community, along with uh, Emma, Zach, and uh, Abraham. And uh, it's funny because just like Beyondry, uh, I'm doing sea kayaks, so <laughs> it's quite uh, <laughs> A nice hazard, I would say. Nice, no, thanks. Uh, the next one, Abraham. Oh, hi, I'm Abraham. I'm based in Joint Space of Africa. I'm part of the Open um, Faisal Project. Um, yeah, with Emma, Celine, and Zach. 
I think I see them here. Cool. And my most recent hobby is um, collecting um, little things for my, because I just recently got a postdoc. So I've been collecting some artworks, like, well, some antique shops, and I was getting things like this. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> So that's what I've been. That's what I've been doing uh, because I'll, I might be moving soon. So I'm just uh, getting stuff. Cool. Nice. Uh, next one, Izil. Hi, hello. I'm Etil Wigan from uh, University of Reading, UK. I'm a PhD student, uh, and uh, I am uh, working on the product for development of an open uh, source platform for the data storage and uh, meta-analysis of the uh, clinical uh, uh, studies. And my hobbies is I recently started learning Japanese because I love animes and Japanese and culture stuff. And also I'm into sailing, so hopefully we'll be getting some courses on that as well. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Next one is Pedro. I think you are muted. Hi, my name is Pedro and I am, I am um, based in San Francisco, California, and I work on the same project as Valentina and Isil about creating this open source platform for storage sharing and synthesis of clinical data in neuroscience. And uh, my main hobby is triathlon. I do swim, bike, run. see that something was written in the chat so um so Jafsia Elze from okay I cannot pronounce it in, in Cameroon and I'm research assistant in the electro mechanics and artificial intelligence in departments in the lab and my project is about developing an open source diagnostic for breast cancer and my recent hobby was has been playing football and gardens nice Thanks for sharing. Um, and then I see some people that didn't put their names in the world call, I feel, uh, but that didn't introduce themselves. Um, so, Kevin. Okay. No. And next one uh, so then victoria uh, uh, you can uh, okay go ahead then sorry yes my my name is kevin mugawi i'm based in nairobi kenya i'm a, a postgraduate student i'm working on a project that is aimed at uh, developing a, a simplified uh, kit for detection of community-based detection of malaria so in this in this in this project uh, We've utilized a lot of open source tool to develop with other complex And uh, my recent hobby is uh, giving trainings and talks to undergraduate students, of which I intend also to extend to to primary school uh, primary school pupils to at least to encourage them to take up science. Hi everyone, I'm Victoria from Argentina. I am in the same project as Sabrina, Federico, uh, Veronica, and Laura. Um, uh, this project uh, name is RFAI. Um, my most recent hobby is uh, composting and learning to make wind soil. Thanks. And then last name that uh, Rob. Uh, hi, my name is Rob. Uh, I'm in South Africa and I'm working on the project with Georgia to uh, sort of provide uh, resources for people who are or have children who are autistic uh, in sort of and making it easier for them to access it in specifically rural parts of 
South Africa. And a recent hobby is maybe I'm learning how to dance or trying to learn how to dance. <laughs> nice. Um, did I forget anyone? I'm not sure if, if did if, has everybody introduced them there? Okay, simple. Good. If not, please let uh, either unmute yourself or um, put uh, some comments in the chat. Um, and really lovely to meet all of you and to know a bit more of about all of you. Uh, I will end over to Amy. Uh, I think you are the next, Amy. I am. Thank you so much, Bernice. Um, and really, really lovely to meet you all and begin our 16 weeks together. I Yeah, this is like literally my favorite part. I mean, the previous part was my favorite part of the, of the cohort. Um, so um, it's really great to see how you have all came from all parts of the world. Uh, we tried to represent it a little bit on the slide here. Um, with Hopefully you can find your language. If not, um, let us know. We're, we should add it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just want to give you a small intro into what Open Life Science is all about and who we are, where we, where, um, what are you here to do. Um, so you've hopefully met all of us on this call so far. There is Berenice, Yo, Malvika and myself. We're at the Open Life Science organizers. Uh, Yo, I guess with a special title now, also Executive Director of Open Life Science. Um, so we're here to organize um, the program, of course, but also to um, be your point of contact whenever you need anything about, you wanna have any questions about open life science or, well, to be honest, anything open science, um, you could give us a shout and we're happy to, yeah, help where we can. Um, so very lovely to meet you all. Uh, oh, these are our Twitter handles. So if you wanna you know, follow us, but no obligations, just for your information. <laughs> Um, so why are we all here and why did we actually, why did we um, run OLS in the first place? Uh, we believe that to be effective, science should be shared openly with others and made freely available. And uh, for that reason, we've really been like sharing and, and collaborating and really um, being part of a community and running community has really been who we really are. So. Um, as much as open life science is, you know, run by the four of us, um, it's actually there's many, many more people than than there's all of you in OLS five, and then there's all of the people who was ever part of the community. Without any of you, OLS is not OLS as it is. So um, I think this number might need some updating. <laughs> I think there's over 300 people who have mentored, contributed, shared their skills, and graduated from OLS since 2000 and. 20. So yay, you're here with us. Welcome. So the life, Open Life Science Program helps individuals and research groups, and actually just groups, <laughs> to become open science ambassadors. And you may, I mean, I, I often feel like ambassadors may be quite a big word, um, but you know, we, we all want we're all here because we're passionate about open science and we all want to sort of use our knowledge and powers to influence those around us. So this is what we mean, I think, um, when, we, when we say open science ambassadors. And we believe that science can only advance when we share our work with others. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> thanks very nice. there's 372 people, wow. Um, this is incredible. Um, unfortunately, in, uh, having been, I think all, all of us organizers and a lot of us in the community have been, you know, in research environments or is are in research environments, and we see that sometimes we are skeptical about sharing our work because, you know, we may be afraid of getting scooped or being criticized. So I think the center central to open life science is really us trying to understand and explore how we can work openly, but without being scientifically vulnerable. And we'll explore a lot more what it means to be scientific, scientifically vulnerable as we you know, head into the, the cohort and the program. And it will mean differently for all of us. 
So together we will explore the important concepts in, in practices in open science and apply them to, in our work one step at a time. I think the key here actually is one step at a time. I don't think anyone is comfortable with doing everything um, at the same time. It's very overwhelming. So we, we really want to stress that, you know, we will, you will learn a lot in the next 16 weeks, but every single time we want you to reflect on your projects, the work that you're doing and understand, you know, the steps that you want to take and definitely not all of them, but the ones that suit you and your project and your community. So uh, logistically, Open Life Science is a 16 week long personal mentorship and cohort based training program. You have already gone through week one, so there's 15 weeks left actually. Um, we do um, the part where there is, there's sort of two main components. So one-on-one -on -one mentoring, you have already begun that with your mentor hopefully last week. There's cohort-based training, which is what we're doing now and we'll be doing every other week um, where you will be in, a, on, in, a, in an online call with the rest of your cohort and we'll hear from experts, from, from speakers from each other and learn um, that way through discussions and through listening and um, asking questions. And then there's also the part where you have hands-on practice where we'll at the, at the sorry, tongue-tied at the end of cohort calls, we'll have some assignments where you can um, get some experience through guided exercise on how to apply um, what you've just learned in cohort calls and in mentoring. So um, throughout the next few months, to structure many of our lessons, we'll be using something called Mozilla's Open Leadership Framework. There's a link here um, that you can uh, read more about the framework itself, but we'll keep coming back to this uh, as well in the rest of this call and also throughout the whole OLS journey. So no need to stress too much about this now. But what we do need to understand is that open leaders, we believe that open leaders design, build and empower their projects and communities for understanding, sharing and participation and inclusion. So there's quite a few underlined words there. Um, and we'll, we'll also unpack these a little bit and, and dig into them more as we progress through the program. It's gonna be a daunting table here <laughs> to unpack this. Um, basically, uh, what we want to say is, you know, being an open leader um, involves uh, various actions. Um, so the things that you do are designing, building and empowering. And these things that you do will allow people in your community to understand, to share and to participate. So uh, these, this table sort of outlines the different activities and different um, areas and topics uh, of focus that we will go through during the program um, so that you can understand how to design and build your open project to facilitate these goals. Um, there are many types of open science communities. Open science can mean many things. And you will, I've heard already in the introduction, and I'm sure you have too, that you know, folks here come from um, or have projects that are in all these different domains of open science. So you know, some of you have open data projects and clinical data, for example. You have open source software projects and platforms, so open source hardware. Um, open access papers, open access uh, protocols, preprints, open review, open education, citizen science and scientific networks. So all of these are uh, part of open science and they're very much interlinked. So we will learn a lot more about these topics as well as the, as the program progress. Uh, the other, I think that actually the most important, one of the most important concepts in, in, in open life science is this concept of open by design. So um, there was a study in 2012 of 160 tech companies, um, and they found that the level of strategic intent in openness and not just openness alone correlates with market performance. This is just a sort of example of the, of the power of uh, having strategic intent in openness. Um, 
and uh, we'll explore more of what that means to our individual projects in the program. But this is just to say that, you know, there is real data to back up the fact that it's good to have strategic intent and openness. So what we want to, what we really want to emphasize, and we will again and again over the next 16 weeks is designing openness into your work and not just let it be a thoughtless default. Um, so being intentional about building, designing, empowering for sharing, understanding and participating. We hope that with your leadership and your vision and your ideas combined with our mentoring and training, you can achieve positive cultural change within your community and beyond. And I think that's all the slides I have. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them while I navigate back to the agenda. And don't worry if all of that sounds like a blur. <laughs> <laughs> we will we will um, dig a lot more into the individual concepts and you will as well with your mentors um, throughout the course of the next couple of months. Okay, so enough of me talking. Now's your chance. Um, we're gonna go into our first breakout room. Thank you, Laura. Um, and we will take it quite slowly because this is our first breakout rooms by Two months in, you will be completely fluent in breakout rooms, and we will not have to do this. Um, we'll be will be a lot more a lot faster. Um, but for now, um, bear with me, and as I introduce what breakout rooms are. So, uh, Zoom has this magical function <laughs> uh, that allows uh, people, folks on this call, to be split into small rooms for discussion. Um, so we, we will use that functionality quite a lot to allow you all to, the aim is to allow you to speak. Um, and because we have so many people, we have to split you into smaller groups so that you individually get the chance to speak. Um, so when we ask you to go into a breakout room, uh, usually we will have some discussion prompts. So these are topics that we expect you to talk about usually questions that you, you would individually answer with uh, or discuss with each other. Um, and we will set rooms for a, a fixed amount of time. So right now it's uh, 15 minutes for the next section, I believe. Or is it, oh no, sorry, 10 minutes, I read wrong, sorry. 10 minutes for the, for the next breakout room. In your breakout room this time, there will be three people. So including yourself, three people. So you can imagine that each person will get approximately three minutes to speak. Um, we're, pointing this out specifically because we would like everyone in the room to approximately have the same amount of time to speak. So if you're noticing yourself speaking nonstop of five minutes, it might be a good chance to stop and let someone else jump in. Um, as Malvika was saying in the beginning, there are sp spoken and written breakout rooms. Um, for the spoken rooms, you can have a spoken exchange. So, you know, unmute yourself, switch on your camera if you're comfortable. The rooms are not recorded, by the way and you can just have a chat with the rest of the others in the breakout room. If you're in a written breakout room, we would like you to exchange your thoughts and ideas uh, through writing. So you could do that um, two ways. Either you could use the Zoom chat in your breakout room. That's um, only visible to the people who are in your Zoom breakout room and no one else, Not so not everyone. So you can safely use it. Um, or you can um, do your written exchanges on the etherpad itself. So you see that we have this note section on the etherpad from under line 140. You can identify your group number. That should be somewhere when you join the breakout room. It should tell you which group you're in. And then find the right section and you can start typing um, in the note section on the etherpad below. Uh, what else do I need to go through? If you need any assistance in your breakout room, there is a ask for help button. The button is at the bottom of the screen on the menu bar. On menu bar. Did I miss anything, Yo? That was beautiful. Should we just recap on the task for this? Before we oh, yes. <laughs> and I forgot what the discussion prompts are. Thanks, Yo. Um, okay, so in, in your breakout rooms for the next 10 minutes, we'd like you to discuss what was your path to the Open Life Science Program? How did you get into working open? And how has working open affected your leadership so far? So these are three questions. You don't have to answer all of them, but 
pick the one that you like, ones that you like and discuss and get to know each other. I'll copy the prompts into the Zoom chat while we, um, just in case uh, we get a bit lost. I get lost all the time. <laughs> Yo, are we ready with the rooms? We are ready. Uh, so folks, uh, this is opening in, oh, your um, written or spoken designations are in the room title and they're also in the ether pad. Um, yeah, so rooms will open in three, two, one, blast off. You have 10 minutes. All right, hope you all had a good discussion. Um, I wonder if anyone would be interested in just unmuting and sharing out uh, some of the interesting things that you've talked about. This is where you will get to know that I'm not very afraid of awkward silences and I shall use that a lot. <laughs> I probably can share something. <laughs> Go ahead, Maria Angela. Uh, yeah, so I was talking to Zach. So I'm a neuroscientist and Zach is an archaeologist. And it was uh, funny for me because uh, we found this proximity in the reasons why we are interested in open science. And it was possibly kind of like frustration with our own project and now little open they have been and how disorganized they have been. So I, I, I just found interesting this um, uh, common um, tracks of some very distant uh, fields. So like we're really all in this together. So it's good to know in a way. <laughs> Thank you, Maria Angela. Yeah, I could echo that. Um, uh, folks here come from all different sorts of fields and, and backgrounds and career stages. And unfortunately, some of the issues are the same. <laughs> but we're here to change that that's not, that's the energy so thank you so much for sharing out um uh, please feel free to read each other's um notes where where they are on the etherpad and i think under line 140 at the moment um and uh I'm, we will create as much as possible opportunities to for you all to get to know each other throughout the course of the next couple of months so stay tuned um I'm going to ask, because there are two people who just joined us since our introductions, I'm just gonna, if I could quickly ask themselves to introduce uh, themselves. Um, so if you could say your name, where you are, so location, uh, your project name and your recent hobby. We try and keep it short uh, if, if possible. Um, I'm gonna start maybe with Nadira, you still here? Hello, yes, I'm here. Um, okay, uh, should I share the camera as well? I think that would be better. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Nadira. I am from Uzbekistan, uh, currently in a project called uh, Embola. We are working on prediction of the cancer. And I'm really keen on combination of the machine learning with the health care. It's like really, really inspired on um, something like that. And kind of doing some, uh, taking some medical courses as well, just to go, go deeper in this sphere, not only from the perspective of software engineering, but also from the perspective of health care as well. That's it from me. If you ever plan to come to Uzbekistan, please see me. I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, and then uh, Stefan, I'm not sure if you could speak. Uh, if you if you prefer to write instead, you can also leave your intro. Oh, there we go. Uh, yes, hi, I think I can speak from 
Perfect. Hi, everyone. Um, yes. Uh, hi, my name is Stefan Padanka. Uh, and I work with Nojira and Elise to, on a project called Open Science for Improved Diagnostic of uh, Cancer through Artificial Intelligence and Digital Pathology. Uh, I'm based in Cameroon. Uh, my background is in molecular biotechnology, and my current hobby is everything that's to do with 3D printing, modeling, and everything, which is quite far from what I'm doing on a daily basis. Uh, so, yes, hi, nice to be here. Very cool. Thank you, Stefan. All right. Um, with that, uh, I'm going to hand over to Yo, who will talk about open campuses. I will do so. Thank you so much, Annie. Right, now we need a share screen dance and hope it shares the right one. Wait there a minute. Make it big first. Slideshow. And now. Okay, am I sharing the thing that I want to be sharing? Emmy has a thumbs up. Excellent. And if I go forward, does that still go forward? Oh, this is amazing. Okay, right. Okay, so folks, we're going to talk about Open Canvas now. Um, so this is a little form that is just designed to help you think in a structured way about what you're trying to achieve. Um, if at any point my, my, I look like I'm looking away from the camera when I'm speaking, it's because I'm looking at my slides on the other monitor. Um, I am paying attention, I swear. So, um, like Amy mentioned earlier, we come back to this sentence time and time again, highlighting different parts of it every time we um, present things. So right now we're talking about designing uh, and building projects that empower people. Um, and once again, this so we, we're covering the design part of this beautiful table that we will come back to a few times. Um, and so this is the open canvas and you say, huh, what is this? It looks like a bunch of boxes. I say, yes, it is a bunch of boxes, but it's a bunch of boxes that are structured to help you think through what you're doing with your project. Um, so um, I'm not gonna go through all of the slides because a lot of them just sort of step you through box by box by box. You can go and look at that later if you wish to do so. I'm probably just gonna mostly step through this one here. Um, so starting on the top left, uh, Emmy, can you thumbs up if I am using my cursor? Does that show? It does, excellent. Top left, this is where I always start when I'm thinking through, and this is something that I'll try and think through um, with regards to running OLS as a project, um, but you want to think about it for your project. So for OLS, I might think that the problem that I'm trying to solve is that research really should be shared. I mean, you say to people, I, I work in open science, they say, wait, science isn't open, um, but actually, um, Often it isn't. And so we want to solve the fact that science and that research, even when it doesn't necessarily fall into a STEM field, isn't open. Our solution, uh, okay, so the OLS solution you probably know is that we're trying to run, run training to make it easier for people to have the tools to share things. Um, think what that might be your solution for your project that you're trying to solve for the problem. And then we ask, how will we measure success? Uh, so for OLS, that might be we measure success by the number of people that we've trained who then go on to help and spread this um, in, in their communities and their domains. For your project, that might look very different. Um, and we think, what resources do we need to actually run this? Looking down now at the bottomest box here on the left. Uh, so what do you need to build the minimum viable product? So that's not the perfect thing that solves everything. But if you just want to get going, what's the very minimum that you need? So, um, for example, at the moment, OLS, we have staff. Um, that's still a very new thing. It's weird to say. Um, but what our minimum viable product was volunteer time. Right. And we just bought we, we begged and borrowed and stole Zoom rooms from everyone because we couldn't afford to buy our own Zoom room. But you figure out what the minimum things that you really need to run this are. Um, so for our less, that was volunteer time, a Zoom room and, you know, some Google Docs, something like that might be the very minimum that you need. Um, and it will depend. So if you have a software project, you might need to have server hosting. If you have a physical event that you're running, you might need to have a space. So there's lots of different minimum resources depending on the project that you want. Um, and it's okay if sometimes if you're working through these boxes and you think, I really don't know, leave it, check with your mentor. They may be able to see what is a bit hard to see when you're standing there in the middle of the project. Uh, moving on to the next box, contributor profiles. Now. You've sort of thought about the things that you want to do, but who's going to be involved? 
And so there's two types of uh, people that you're going to have. One is contributors. Uh, so in OLS, the contributors, we might say, are our mentors and our experts. Um, and then there's users. So the users might be in OLS, might be, the, um, might be you all, you beautiful, lovely people who are here participating in the cohort. Try and think what that looks like for your project, who's going to be contributing and who's going to be using. And sometimes they overlap. Um, so we have mentors, uh, rather we have cohort participants who've been mentors in the past and who've been experts in the past for OLS. So don't assume that they aren't the same people, but they may have different needs depending on what role they are in. Uh, think about the channels for these people to get involved. So how do your contributors get involved? And how do your users get involved? So our contributors, we might say someone in OLS was a, um, was a participant and then they graduated later to be a mentor. So they moved from being a user to being a contributor. And how we got users, social media? I, I don't know, where do you all come from? It's amazing, I love it. <laughs> Let me know where you come from. I should have a more structured answer for this one, right? Um, and once you've thought about all of those, hopefully you can think about what your unique value proposition is. Um, and a unique value proposition is usually just a really short sentence telling people what you do, how you get there. Um, and sometimes, I'll be honest, I've even started this backwards despite the arrows. There have been play times when I've written the unique value proposition and then I've figured out the users and the contributors elsewhere. So. I, I won't tell anyone if you skip boxes when you're working on this as well. Um, I am going to quickly step through the slides. I think that's the majority of stuff. Yep, this is just walking through individual boxes and explaining the same way I did. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, am I stopping sharing? Righty. Um, do we have any questions? Did I skip anything really obvious when I was talking about this? Please let me know or type questions line 200. Echo, echo. I'm assuming that I was so super, super clear. <laughs> I probably wasn't. Um, okay, Laura says, thank you, Yo. How long does it take to put this together? Um, I would block out an hour in my calendar, sit down and take a stab at it. Um, if it's taking more than that, you might be stuck and want to talk to your mentor. Um, it shouldn't take a really long time. I don't like. I, I honestly wouldn't expect this to be something that has to be perfect or that has to take hours, um, and it's going to change. So you'll come back in six weeks or twelve weeks, and you're like, mm, yeah, that was naive. Or actually, you know, we did even better than that. So don't worry about it too much. More, more think about it as prompts, as a structured way of thinking about what your project is, so that you can then um, share it with other people. Um, even if some of the boxes are missing or anything like that. Do we have any more questions? I talk very fast. I hope I wasn't talking too fast. Okay, right, so uh, a couple more tips then. Um, you can look at the walkthrough in the slides. If any of the particular bits weren't clear to you, you can ask in the RLS5 cohort Slack. Uh, people may be able to provide advice or tips or how does this apply to my scenario and always come back to your mentors. Um, Emmy, I am gonna start moving to the breakout rooms, I think. Are you doing good? Um, you can start, I am doing <laughs> amazing okay right i will introduce the breakout rooms while emmy sorts people um we did our very best not to put people in the same project together and it still accidentally happened at least once in the last set of breakouts we are trying to shuffle you around as much as possible um so thank you for bearing with us so next thing is um we are going to ask people to talk about their project vision uh mission and vision um and the idea is that you get the chance to introduce it to a, a, co, a, a cohort colleague. Do we have a word for this? Uh, your, your, your friend in your breakout room um, and talk about what you're doing um, and just share what you think your big vision is. Um, and maybe, maybe write down a sentence or two about it as well. 
Um, this is, think of this as, you may have heard the phrase elevator pitch, where if you meet someone in an elevator and you have to explain in two minutes what's going on, think of it as that, but uh, developing it together, not competitively, not like you're going to get the, not going to get the money at the end of the five minutes if you don't share it. Um, and then try and write it down in the etherpad. So we'll have two people per group. You'll get five or six minutes, so not so long. Not, not long really, um, just like two or three minutes per person and then you swap over and try and offer a little bit of feedback or suggestions or clarification if needed. Emmy, have I explained for long enough? I have. Yes. Okay. Is, There's, is the goal. Sorry, can I? Yeah, I will say one thing, which is that one room will have three people, unfortunately. Um, but so be cautious of time and maybe do some copy and pasting of visions and yeah. Um, if you need any help, press the ask for help button. We're here to assist. Opening our rooms now. We can see your screen. Thank you. Perfect. All right. I'm going to sprint through the road mapping. This is very exciting. It's also one of the favorite parts of, of open projects. So we will discover how to use a roadmap. I'm sure all of you have had, most of you have had some sort of experience with roadmaps. If not, don't worry either. We'll walk you through it. Uh, to plan for your work and contribution for your open projects. And we'll also look at some examples. And there is an assignment at the end of this where we will be, <laughs> we will be um, asking you to create or revise your project roadmap. I can have all the parts of OLS being my favorite parts of OLS. <laughs> you can too. <laughs> all right, jokes aside. Um, we're, we're coming back to the sentence again, and this time um, we want to highlight that uh, open roadmaps will help open leaders design um, and build projects that will empower others to collaborate within inclusive communities. So how do we do that with a roadmap? Skip over this. Um, the first most important thing for a project is to make a good first impression. Um, and how, how do we do that in an inclusive and um, encouraging for participation way is by making a space that really feels very welcoming. Um, you can use you can do that by explaining how others can get involved when they're, you know, maybe reading your project website or project roadmap. Um, and you can also cre help create a welcoming space by letting others know what is happening now and what's coming next. So let me put that more into a, um, an, an actual setting. So when we think about how to structure a roadmap, um, we encourage you to think about these three things. Number one, have a project summary and a welcome. Number two, have some guidelines or uh, pointers on how people can get involved in the project. And number three, have a timeline. So breaking those down. First of all, project summary and welcome. This section is important because again, first impressions, welcome and orient your visitors to your project. It's important to help them understand where they are. Um, they, you know, we don't know how they ended up on their roadmap on the roadmap. So they could have been linked there from somewhere else. It could have came from a Google search or other things. Um, and sometimes they don't know where they are on the internet. Internet is a big place. So it's important to help them understand where they are first. Um, and one way to do that is also to have a project summary. So to help give a clear focus, um, not only uh, when people are first introduced to the project, but also for the rest of the roadmap. Next, how to get involved. So these people may never have heard about your project and now with the project summary, they know a little bit about the project and they really want to get involved right away. So it's good to point people to parts of the project that they can immediately work on and point to key pieces of documentation that they should check out. Um, I'll show some examples later, which hopefully also have, will help, you know, give some examples of how these can be done. Last but not least, we'll have a timeline, which is the star of the roadmap. So um, you may want to organize the tasks that um, to complete or move your project to the next uh, milestone. Um, 
And you may want to map out what you're working on now and where it is going next. What are milestones? Milestones are significant turning points or events that will move the project forward. So if you're working on a piece of software, for example, um, these could be features, new features, releases, minimal viable products, et cetera. If you're running a community, this may be an event that you're organizing or a hackathon, for example. Um, you may also wanna have milestones for different timeframes. So short, medium, and long-term. Um, and those are very subjective terms. Short could be, you know, the next month and long could be the next in three years. So uh, this is something that you can also discuss with your mentor. Um, your mentor, I think there's a sort of little pointer on the mentoring notes where we, you should be discussing actually your roadmap with your mentor and what you would like to achieve, for example, by the end of OLS. Uh, so have a think about that, discuss with your mentors and see you know, what kind of milestones you wanna map out and for the next 16 weeks or at the end of the 16 weeks. Um, try to pick one to three milestones generally for your timeline um, so that you know it doesn't feel like a forever task. You chop it up and you will feel much more actionable. At least that's my experience. <laughs> and then you can break down each of these milestones into tasks, smaller tasks, um, and include the information for each of the tasks to make it really easy for contributors to understand um, what, those what those milestones are composed of. So these could be things like what needs to be done, what does success look like, the pointers to get started, or why this task is important to reinforce your project vision. All right, how do you, now that you've made a roadmap, how do you make it open? So um, I guess the most important thing is to make sure that your roadmap is stored somewhere that is publicly accessible. Um, so this could be, um, we will, uh, for example, a lot of uh, the projects in OLS in the past have had public roadmaps in GitHub repositories. If you've never used GitHub before, don't worry. Um, we will have an optional uh, GitHub intro session, uh, I think in week five, and you'll be able to have some hands-on experience. Um, and we'll walk you through some small exercises so you can get comfortable in GitHub. Um, so you can, on GitHub, you can have your uh, roadmap on a separate file, like roadmap.md. Again, don't worry if you don't know what MD means, but it's a text file that, you know, has your roadmap on it and it's somewhere in the internet. You can have it in the readme file. Um, it's also, uh, I'll show an example later so you can see how that looks like. But um, instead of having a separate file, you can have it as part of what we call a readme file. Um, you can have it in an issue, and I think we're actually going to try and make everyone do that. Um, so uh, again, it's something that we can, we're happy to give a demo for, uh, on um, after this call is finished, if you want to stick behind and, and see how that works as well. Uh, and then last but not least, you can have it in the projects tab in GitHub. Um, so let's go to the example so that I'm not just talking about um, non-existent things. <laughs> Right, um, here is an example um, back in 2019 when Bernice was uh, trying to roadmap for a uh, call for application for the first cohort of open life science. So this is a, the roadmap is done as an issue of a, of a GitHub repo. Um, sorry, there's a lot of issues here, but it was an issue. Um, and uh, you see that here on the top, it, it says Open Life Science is a mentoring and training program for open science ambassadors in life science. And this is the project summary that we talked about. It automatically, when you read this, you know where you are and what this is all about. The second part, how to get involved. Um, so here it says, if you think you can help with any of the areas listed above, then you can check out our contributors guidelines. And that, again, if you're a new contributor, quickly orient you to how you can get involved in this open project. And then there is a timeline, which has now been finished and everything has been checked off, which is beautiful to see. But you will see the um, uh, milestones here uh, before opening applications, when applications are open and uh, when applications are closed is the three milestones. And then within that, there are separate tasks and each task is laid out with you know, what they actually are, the subtasks, and um, so in some cases, why they are important, for example. So this is one example, and there are many more lovely examples um, that you can find 
if in fact if you haven't if you have come across any good examples we encourage you to share with the rest of the cohort as well in the etherpad um but yeah this these exist in all forms and styles and um we'd love to see also what you um have ideas for um, in terms of making your roadmap open. And if you have any questions, now is a great time to ask. Uh, see Laura's question. Do you have any tips to work on these assignments as a five person team? Um, I, I wanna, <laughs> I, I think I do have some, but I, I also am curious about others, other folks' thoughts when it comes to uh, collaborating across, you know, like spread out teams geographically across um, different people. Or yo, if you have any tips here as well. I'm gonna suggest given the timing, that maybe we run this as a structured uh, question in the OLS5 Slack. Um, that'll give us a bit more time to put it in because I can see the time. <laughs> Thanks, Yo. That's a good point. Um, there, are, there are a couple of um, questions um, on the Etherpad, but I'm, I'm going to take those in Slack uh, if it's okay. It's on the OLS5 cohort channel. And I'm going to hand over to Yo to do the super fast closing and assignments. Luckily, I speak fast. Okay, folks, that was cohort call one. We had a delightful time with you. Um, hopefully, you should be on the OLS5 mailing list. You should have access to the Google Calendar and you should be on the Slack. If any of those aren't true, email team at openlifeside.org and we will fix it. Um, micro grants should be administered. If you have asked for one and you haven't heard back, email team at openlifeside.org. <laughs> There's a theme here. Um, we have been working on this. Um, or if you haven't requested one and you need to, please do that ASAP uh, email. And the idea is that headsets, cameras, internet, things like that, that stop you from participating, we will try and fix for you. Um, final thing, naming our cohort. So every cohort gets a name. I love naming things. This is my favorite part. I have many favorite parts as well. Um, <laughs> think of a name for OLS 5. So OLS 1 was Open Seeds. OLS 2 was Masked Cohort. The pandemic had begun. OLS 3 was Perseverance. We were in the pandemic and there was an amazing robot on Mars. OLS 4 was Kinaz. This is a rune for openness. What is OLS 5 going to be? Propose it, discuss it, talk about it in the Slack. What's that? Resilience. Resilience. I love it. Okay, keep the names coming in, my friends. It is, it is half past the hour on my clock. We are done. I love you all. Keep those names coming in. Have a beautiful day. And we'll see you again later. Goodbye, all. Very nice meeting you.